What up everybody, it's your boy Nautical, back at it with another video. So you remember a while ago when Mark Cerny was talking about how the PS4 had that secret sauce, something that was gonna help it later on in the generation to be able to run and compute games a little bit better than they do now. Well, that feature looked like it is coming to a head because Radeon has already announced the RX Vega line. And with that comes a feature that a lot of people probably didn't know was gonna actually be there. And the name of this feature is called the Rapid Pat Mav. So let's dive deeper into this article to see exactly what that is gonna do. RX Vega will introduce for the first time in desktop GPUs the Rapid Pat Mav feature. This allows two half flow operations to be executed at the same time it would take one full flow operation in the words of AMD. Next gen compute units provide Provide supercharged pathways for doubling processing throughput. When using 16-bit data type, one in case where a full 32-bit of precision is not necessary to attain the desired result. They can pack twice as much data into each register and use it to execute two parallel operations. This is ideal for a wide range of computational intensive applications including image, video processing, ray tracking, artificial intelligence, and game rendering. Mark Cerny was actually interviewed back in October 2016, and this is where he talked about this feature actually coming to fruition later on down the line when AMD released it. A few AMD roadmap features are appearing for the first time in PS4 Pro. One of the features appearing for the first time is the handling of 16-bit variables. It's possible to perform two 16-bit operations at the same time instead of one 32-bit operation. In other words, at full float, we have 4.2 teraflops. With half floats, it's now doubling that which we can say is 8.4 teraflops in 16-bit computations. This has the potential to radically increase performance. They also talked to other developers and they said that Microsoft actually didn't implement this into the custom design of the Xbox One X because they felt with the extra GPU and RAM usage, they didn't need it. And this is something that they said they didn't want to put more time into researching and implementing, which is something that third-party developers could choose to skip. And you know what? I'm glad that Microsoft didn't implement this. I feel like this is something that goes against everything Microsoft tried to talk about when it came to the Xbox One X. They wanted to be super easy to move on to. They want everybody to make their games and just make the development time as fast as possible instead of having to think about how they want to use the power and in what ways they want to use it for. So this is a really good idea by Microsoft. But this just seems like another reason why people are going to have a harder time developing this type of feature on a PS4 Pro. Now, first party developers are not going to have an issue with this because they have a very intimate relationship with the system so they actually probably been working on something like this for quite some time now but who really thinks that third-party developers on a massive scale is going to take advantage of this feature amd already revealed last week that wolfenstein 2 the new colossus and far cry 5 two of the most anticipated first person shooters due out this upcoming year will take advantage of this feature and i just don't know if more people are going to do that they already talk about people taking advantage of the power of the xbox one x over the ps4 Pro because they say they develop for the lower common denominator and the Xbox One X basically just has more raw power. So this system actually needs a feature to even get it closer to what the performance of the Xbox One X is. And do you really think developers are going to really do that if you think they're not even going to take advantage of the power of the Xbox One X and that's just raw power. All they got to do is just make the game look and run better. They don't have to go through any type of math or science-y type way to actually get the game to work better. Ultimately, I don't think this is going to matter at all. When I think of it, DX12 is the first thing that comes to mind. DX12 was only meant to make the game run more efficiently on the Xbox One platform and just get it to be more stable when it comes to the GPU and CPU all talking to each other and just give you a more stable environment for the game. It wasn't something that was going to radically get performance closer to the PS4 and that's only because it really couldn't impact the power of the system. This is actually talking about making it be closer to the power of the Xbox One X. And I just don't see a feature doing that because the hardware isn't strong enough to do it. Now, it may eat out a little bit more frames per second or something like that, but is it gonna be really significant enough to actually make you wanna say, hmm, this is actually on par with the Xbox One X for $100 less, and I just don't see that happening. But you never know. This is something that I'm not gonna jump the gun on, but ultimately, I don't think this is gonna really matter at all. So guys, what do you think? Do you think this is just 
using the deploy to get more attention around the PS4 Pro ahead of the launch of the Xbox One X for Sony fans can actually feel better about their system and ultimately think that this is really going to give them some type of hope that that system is going to be a little bit closer to what the Xbox One X is. Let's talk about that in the comment section. Thanks for watching this video, guys. Make sure you sub to the channel if you haven't. Like this video if you like the content. Turn on those notifications. It's going to let you know the next time my videos go live. It's your boy Nautical. You guys have a great week and I will see you guys in the next video and have a great day. Peace.